Thank you so much for having us. My name is Andrew Colom. I'm the writer and executive producer of One Sweet Night. Hello, my name is David Alade. I'm a producer on One Sweet Night. Tell us a little bit about your film for our audience at home. Absolutely. So One Sweet Night is a short narrative film that tells the story of Dr. Ossian and Gladys Sweet. They were they were a family in the 1920s. Ossian was from De was from Florida. And he moved to Detroit and had a successful practice in the Black Bottom. He got married to Gladys and they bought a house on All White Street in Detroit called, called Garland. The second night they moved into the house, a mob attacked the house, screaming and attacking them and terrorizing them. The younger brother shoots out into the mob twice accidentally kills one person, injures another. They go to jail, they're arrested, there's a trial. The NAACP uses money from black people all across the country to raise money to pay Clarence Darrow to come to Detroit to represent the family. The family, there's a, the trial leads to a mistrial in the first case, and then eventually an acquittal of Henry, and everyone is freed of their charges, and basically the Detroit in the 1920s integrates the streets of their city much before most of the country. Yeah, that's kind so of the story. So this is a documentary narrative? No, it's actually a short narrative fiction. So it's really about the, it's one sweet night because I see it sweet, and it tells a story, uh, it's a narrative short about the night of the attack. So it doesn't tell the whole story, it just focuses on the night of the attack. Tell us a little bit about writing the script and how did you shape the story? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, there's a book that's written about the story, so that influenced my thinking in general about the story, and that led to me to do more research on it. And I, I in part made the film because my sister passed away and I was inspired that I really wanted to make another film and I wasn't going to hesitate and this was the most powerful story connected to the work I was doing in Detroit doing real estate. So I wrote the film, you know, thinking about the story of how to connect the different responses to, to, to terrorism that the different characters were experiencing. And Asin, he sort of reacts to it through, honestly, fear. I mean, he has a lot of fear. And then Henry is defiance. And Grace was kind of my heroine, was what I wanted her, and the Gladys, I wanted her to represent Grace. And the best way that I thought to handle the terror was to accept it, but not to be afraid of it, and to interact with it from a position in the strength, which is what I think she try, I try to have her represent in the story. What did you think having not wrote, wrote, written, written it? What did you think? Because he helped me shape the story a lot, too. As a non-writer <laughs> of the story, it was, you know, really great to, to witness. I mean, one of the most amazing things is just the appreciation that, you know, that courage isn't the ability, to, it's, it's not the absence of fear. You know, it's moving forward in spite of fear, in spite of uncertainty. That stuff stays with you forever, but you can accomplish great things if you're able to accept that fear, and you can be part of a changing history, if you, if you can roll with it, except to get good people around you to make you know, solid, smart decisions. Do you think by being a non-rider helped you with the script and, you know, making it better? I would say the experience of living in Detroit. You know, I'm, I'm from New York, from South Jamaica, Queens. Um, you know, I, I live in a, I come from a neighborhood that's not too dissimilar from the neighborhood I live in now in Detroit. So that understanding of the history that got to this point, the story of Detroit, the story for many, many black Americans, both today and the, the historical path they took to create a world where we, we you know, as, as, as you know, young black folks can pursue wealth, can own things, can build, build, build companies. I mean, that's a really emotional, powerful story that's motivated me at the core of a lot of the work we've done for the, the past six years. So I'll say that more than anything, how kind of shape the lens and, and approach uh, to developing this film. Tell me about Detroit. What is Detroit through your eyes? Because when someone like me who's from Texas think about Detroit, I think about cars, I think about Motown, I think about soul music, the food. So tell me what Detroit is through your eyes. Those are great things. A lot of those things are positive things that are definitely part of the sinew of what I think of when I think of Detroit as well. I think a number one of resilience. I think of people people who are resilient. I think of a city that's resilient. I think of a history that's resilient. So I definitely think of resilience when I think of Detroit. I think I think of the American dream. I think it's been a, a tough year for, for a lot of us. Uh, it's been a, been a tough decade for, for even more. Uh, but De Detroit's where the original American dream was actually possible for folks all over the world, including for folks in the South. And I think Detroit now, as it assumes a position in American imagination, people, it's a very emotive concept. But I think it's a place where the American dream can still be realized, where the access, the, the ability to meet folks who are making decisions, the ability to own, you know, the ability to, to be in a place that's growing and accessible. Uh, it represents 
chance a chance to get into to achieve the American dream in a place in a way that you can in a lot of other modern cities. If you don't mind me asking, you mentioned your sister who passed away. May her yeah. memory be a blessing. Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about your sister. Absolutely. Oh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking me that. So her name was Niani Colomo Matessa. She was a entrepreneur, very successful hotel owner and operator in Tanzania. She got trained in France and in America. She uh, has two children before she passed, Zion and Alia, and she has a wonderful husband, um, Chris. So yeah. What is your What is your fondest memories about her? Oh, uh, what she, always brings you a smile when you think of her? Well, when I think of great conversations. So when I have one on one a great conversation with someone, I always think of her because she was a great one on one conversationalist. I had some of the best conversations of my life for sure with my uh, older sister Niani. And also when I see someone dress fly or with a nice little piece, she was a very very fly woman. She had a lot of cool style, so that definitely makes me think of her too. Like I said, may her memory be a blessing, and yes, that's just absolutely. that's just so wonderful. Tell us what did you learn about yourself professionally and personally while making this film? Oh man, you're asking the deep ones. Uh, I would say. I learned the importance of balance, and I think I succeeded in this film. I succeeded with the goal that I wanted to accomplish, but I didn't have enough balance in the approach. And the next time I do a project like this, I'm going to make sure to have more balance. You know, I just kind of ran through it <laughs> and with the pressure and the intimidation because you know I was financing it with all my money, and it was just us kind of scrapping together to make the film. But uh, definitely, I would definitely make sure to work out more next time <laughs> and eat healthier. And just make sure to be in a really great space. <laughs> what about you? What did you learn about yourself professionally and personally while making this film? I think I would say um, I think I played a, a relatively minor role in actual the, the the physical production of the film. And in that process, I was able to learn that every role really matters, and everyone has to be a superstar in their own role. In their own role, they don't have to have the most prominent position, but take your job seriously as a good approach to life. Take whatever role you have seriously, perform at it 100 percent, and you and the team context can achieve great things. I heard in a previous interview you're from Mississippi as well so absolutely. tell us why we should film in Mississippi absolutely tell us what your Mississippi is so we one we have incredible stories and we have everyone knows that we have a legacy of such great writers and storytellers both fiction and nonfiction so we got to come here and we got to tell the stories and also as my brother reminds me of the Faulkner uh, saying you have to, to learn the world you really have to learn a place like Mississippi and I think there's a lot of stories because of the nature of the soil and the history and the people and the complexity, there's a lot of truth to be understood in Mississippi. And I think we can really find that truth by telling the stories in Mississippi in an honest and impactful and vulnerable but a brave way. What's next for you guys professionally? Absolutely. So we we currently do real estate investment day to day. So we, we invest in houses and multifamilies. We improve neighborhoods throughout Detroit. We're looking at other neighborhoods in Michigan. I still own property in Mississippi, in Starkville, in Columbus. My brother owns property. His wife owns property in Starkville. So we live that, what we're saying. The message that we're putting out there, we're constantly trying to tell people to invest in property. You know, Dave is constantly investing in, in property with people in this family. We want people to invest. We're investing, and we're definitely going to look to raise money for films to give un, uh, underappreciated and disadvantaged filmmakers an opportunity to get their films financed at a superior level and an elite level and give those stories sort of the elite funding that they deserve. Lastly, what's your websites and social handles so we can, you know, help fund these projects Absolutely. and help fund these neighborhoods and we can follow you and your Definitely. successes. So, Story Arc for the film and entertainment, Story Arc on Facebook, www.storyarcthestory.com on, on the website, you know, fa Instagram Story Arc, Twitter Story Arc, CenturyPartners.com. You can find our story on CenturyPartners.com for real estate for sure and Century Partners on, for Facebook and Instagram. And David Lottie, David Lottie, Andrew Cologne, David Lottie, Andrew Cologne. Definitely. Thank you very much. Thank Best you so of much. luck to you guys. Thank you so much. Very much.